Doctors of Reddit. What is your how is this guy still alive moment? A woman shot in the side of her head six times with a small caliber pistol. I asked her how she felt. She said she had a headache. Like 40% of people survive gunshot wounds to the head. It's surprising how well doctors can revive people. Not a doctor, but an acquaintance of mine was skating across the street and got hit by a bus head on. It crashed into her, ran over her, and she ended up beneath it, where it began to crush her when it automatically lowered upon stopping. She shattered her legs and her pelvis. She told me it was incredibly traumatizing for the men of people who ran and tried to lift the bus up to get the weight off her to hear her literally scream that she was dying, and that for many years some of them believed she had died, until running into her by chance on the street, fully recovered. Her doctors had told her she would never walk unassisted but she is walking, running, hiking. She credits her helmet, and the doctors, obviously, with saving her life. My fiancé was actually run over by a bus. A big one. Crushed her pelvis. Broken bones in her back. All sorts of internal injuries. She was in a medically induced coma for several weeks. 30-ish surgeries and 15 years later she can do anything she wants. Don't challenge her. She even had two kids. We only met a few years ago and she still drops little bits of the story in passing like it's no big deal. When I was in medical school, we had a patient come in with symptoms of scurvy. Yes. That screwy. When we presented the patient to our attending, they laughed and said it was impossible to get scurvy these days since basically everything is fortified with vitamin C. So we went back to the patient and decided to get a full record of what their diet was. For the past 2-3 years they are McChickens. As in, that's literally all they ever ate. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After 2-3 years they finally came down with a vitamin deficiency, and thus scurvy. To this day I don't know what surprised me more. The fact that they went two years eating nothing but McChickens. Or the fact that the only problem they had was scurvy. There are occasional outbreaks on university campuses. Typically from students who eat nothing but ramen. We give out starbursts. Not a bad about of vitamin C. And encourage some diversity in their diet. Guy came in conscious. Had a ruptured left eye. Short point blank with a pistol through the eye. The bullet ricochet off the back of the skull and crossed the midline of the head. When he came in, I was on my way out from duty. So I'm not sure what happened to him. A trauma had a fast turnover. I get called for all the eye trauma at a fairly large level 1 center. It's amazing how many people get shot in the eye head and sit there and talk to me. Sometimes little brains oozing from their gunshot wounds while they, usually drunkenly, converse with you. I coo doc here. Woman overdosed on drugs, stabbed herself with a knife, wrapped a plastic bag over her head and jumped in the river, in the winter, made it out alive. If that's not a sign that you're meant to live I don't know what is. Had a guy who was shot 22 times, all at once. Man, was he mad. Missed everything guy was in the 600 pound range. A little more. The guy was huge, so the bulk of his cross section was fat. The gun was an Uzi. This is an Israeli knockoff of an AK-47. It fires a .22 cal at a rapid rate, at any distance at all. The bullet velocity is slowed, and the rapid fire rate moves the arms of an experienced shooter. So the shooter hit lots of fat, missed the vitals. Haha <laughs> for some reason the image of a guy shot 22 times going I gotta tell your fellas. This has upset me. Work in a pharmacy. We got a call from a doctor about his patient's chemo. He had prescribed a strength 10 times higher than he should have for a cancer patient. But not only was the patient still alive, they were in full remission. Sometimes the pharmacist will fix blatant issues in prescriptions. Me and some friends flipped a jeep over 5 times at 5, 60 miles per hour. The thing was crushed reduced to nothing. We were all buckled in. We crawled out and only have road rash. We were taken to the hospital. No concussions nothing. The cop showed the doctor the photo of the incident. The doctor asked how are we alive. I went butt end into a tree at 60 miles per hour once. The tree ended up halfway into the rear of my car. I hit it so hard I snapped the headrest off with my head. So I guess it did its job. If I would have hit the tree at any other angle I'd be dead. Went to the air to get checked but I was fine. Seen a brain MRI from a malformed person that had approximately 40% of its brain. 
the right hemisphere just wasn't there, less than half thalamus and midbrain, only cerebellum, medulla and spinal cord were whole in the central nervous system. To my surprise, besides not being able to walk and having difficulties doing precise movements with hands, the patient was a pretty normal and functional human being, not even my teachers knew how to explain it. I knew a guy like that. He said there was just a load of fluid where most of one hemisphere of his brain should be. One side of his body was a bit messed up, walked with a limp, limited dexterity with his arm hand, and he had seizures fairly often, but he coped with the physical limitations pretty well and seemed completely capable mentally. Not a doctor, but my grandfather, who is in 80s, overweight, 300ish LBS, maybe 350ish, and has pre-existing conditions. Diabetes, has had a quad bypass, is currently still in the hospital. In early December, he went in for COVID, beat that, but then suffered sepsis, beat that, but started urinating blood in PT, rushed back to hospital to find blood thinner medicine issue, seemed to get over that, but crashed one night, ended up on life support, ended up having blood clots in upper legs and sepsis coming back, currently recovering from that. Odds are 50 stroke 50 right now, but I cannot believe he's made it this far or that it's even 50 stroke 50. I doctor here, I see a lot of patients who have either not gone to the regular primary care physician since they were children and are now in their 50s or older. They come to me because they can't see something like their phone, which is pretty normal for most past the age of 40. Blood pressure screening is a normal part of our screening tests as well. So if the screeners catch something I double check it. I have seen patients with legitimate pressures of 290 stroke 150 even using size adjusted cuffs. Normal pressure is around 120 stroke 80. They have little blood spraying out on their retinas and they have bright red eyes. I have sent dozens of these patients, almost always men, directly to the ear to try to get this under control before they stroke out in my chair. Frick. Mine is 160 stroke 110 and I'm like doctor, now. Not a doctor but on my first call as an EMT we went to check out a guy that fell off a ramp at a skate park. When we first got there he was getting a pretty good black eye. Talking, walking, good spirits, vitals looked okay. He almost refused us but we persuaded him to go to the adjust to get checked out. So we get him in the ambulance, have him lay down and start going to the lights off. Blood pressure starts dropping very quickly, which was weird cause he wasn't bleeding anywhere, or so we thought. By the time we got the hospital lights flashing in maybe 5 minutes, he'd vomited several pints of blood and was totally unresponsive. Very weak blood pressure. Turned out he didn't just have a black eye. He'd crushed that whole orbital area and was bleeding profusely internally. But it was running down the back of his throat and filling his stomach so there was no external blood till he lay down and started vomiting it back up. It was super lucky we convinced him to come to the ear in the first place. Based on our initial assessment he could have declined and probably wouldn't have made it to the ear in time if we had to go back a second time. A doctors were very peeved at us for not fully palpating his forehead normally you would do that. We skipped it because we didn't want to cause added pain. But had we done that it would have felt soft and mushy instead of bony. An obvious sign he needed to get to the ear fast. Head injuries bleed a lot. He was rushed into surgery. Not only lived, but they found and removed a brain tumor that would have probably caused problems later anyway. I can't remember for sure but don't think he had a helmet on. If that was the case he probably wouldn't have gotten away with just a mild concussion. Jesus. That was a frickin ride. Not a doctor. Went to the ear with severe pain on my right side. Turned out to be appendicitis. Had my appendix removed and stayed overnight in the hospital. Woke up to the doctor who removed my appendix sitting in my room. He asked if I was sure that I hadn't had any pain or symptoms prior to coming into the hospital. I said I hadn't. Apparently, my appendix had dried up and become solid. He said I should have been okay months ago or dead. Then asked if he could take my appendix for study and for teaching purposes. Signed a couple of papers and sent it off with him. I'm not a doctor but in my town in Italy we had a man deported to Auschwitz during World War II. He managed to get back to our little town's hospital with webs instead of actual lungs. His lungs were so dang thin, some sheets of paper at most, and this is not a joke, 
that the doctors didn't even understand at all how he was breathing and walking without collapsing on the floor. They managed to cure him, and he lived a long life afterwards. Not a doc but a nurse. We had a guy walk into our emergency department with a bloody towel wrapped around his head. We began undoing the towel and saw that there was a blade going into his head with a handle broken off. We were amazed he was walking and talking. In fact, when he went to tell us what happened, we could see the blade in the back of his mouth. He had emergency surgery and discharged home a week later. This is the kind of stuff which makes you realize that being embarrassed about talking about your hurting testes is dumb. That's not even a blip on the radar of a personnel. Not a doctor, but sometimes I really wondering why my dad is still alive. Excuse me for my bad English. He is now 70. In his 40 he worked at a Kalb car station and at one day he had to fix something on a mast and in the valley station the rope got torn apart which caused the rope at the upper end to whips. It hit my dad and this mate. His mate got thrown down and died. My dad got hit on his kidney and it lost its complete function. Now he has dialyze. In his 50 he had a really bad motorcycle accident where his shoulder was completely out of place. It was literally was in his ribs. At the hospital he woke up out of anesthesia because of the pain he was feeling as they tried to bring his shoulder back into place. 60. He got cancer and was so mad that he had a heart attack. But it got cured. Later he had a second heart attack. Last 3 years he was developed with 3 more different cancers. They needed to remove the functional kidney. That's why he has dialyze. He has a lot of disabilities. 20% of his lungs are dysfunctional. He has heart diseases. And more. I'm glad your dad is still hanging in there, and I understood your English pretty well. Keep at it, friend. Not a doctor but a paramedic. Went to a lift assist with no apparent injuries. The man was on the floor with a small blood soaked hand towel on his head. I lifted the towel and saw that he had no scalp left. It had been eating away because he refused to get medical attention. I was a patient, and I've only got this second hand for some of it because I was unconscious. I'm immune suppressed, developed covid, became delirious, and then went septic. Then, because I'm epileptic, when my temperature hit 105 I went into status epilepticus and my roommate called 999. I spent 10 days in hospital, but the only thing I remember from the first 3 is pulling my, inflated, catheter out in the ear because I didn't like it. Comma pulling my, inflated, catheter out, nope, nope. Nope 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 nope. Nope. Not saying you didn't do it. Just saying my brain is going to pretend it never read that. I think this kind of fits here. I'm not the doctor. Or really even the patient. My daughter is the one who shouldn't have survived. During labor with my youngest they noted several times that her heartbeats were sharply decelerating. Every time they managed to get them up again by giving me oxygen. So we just went on. For 34 hours. After both she, and the placenta, were finally born I asked the midwife, we were in the hospital to be clear, to spread it out and show my husband because we had been talking about placental anatomy earlier that week. So she takes it and lays it down on a pad to show him and goes. Oh number it turns out that her placenta had developed something called vasa previa. For anyone who's never seen a placenta, there's a big meaty slab that attaches to the wall of the uterus and then a thin, balloon like sac that kind of bubbles out from the edges of that. The umbilical cord is supposed to grow into the meaty part, because that's the most stable spot, and where nutrient transfer between mom and baby is happening. Her cord had grown into the thin sac, which meant that all the large veins in the cord had to traverse the sac all the way to where they were actually supposed to be. She had over 8 centimeters of exposed veins. They weighed as was told to me indicated that is a massive length. And the placenta had burst 1 stroke 2 cm from the largest of them. The heart decelerations were from contractions compressing that vein and cutting off her oxygen supply. Placements of that kind of defect vary. And mortality rates vary accordingly. Apparently the mortality rate for our placement is at least 80%. The defect isn't the issue. The birth is what's dangerous. Had they known, it should have been caught on ultrasound. The midwife was furious. I would have been scheduled for a c-section around 38 weeks to avoid the risk of labor. Every doctor who's ever seen her medical history is shocked she made it through. 
My brother got hit by a car then got attacked by a bear and then got rained on for 6 hours straight and tried to walk slipped and fell and cracked his head open and managed to call for help and he didn't get any long term damage. Like this man needs to go lottery ticket buying. Nope he already used up all his good luck. I had a patient who passed away in 2018 who contracted AIDS in, wait for it, 1987. He just kept on keeping on. R.I.P. D. That's amazing. This is my favorite story. Lab tech. In Haiti I did a hemoglobin on a guy and it was 50 GL. The guy was walking around. Anyone with a hemoglobin that low in Canada would be dead. My mum convinced my stepfather to go to the hospital. He had had a heart attack a few years earlier and had similar symptoms. She drove him there and my stepfather, who refused a wheelchair, walked into A and D and the doctors looked at him and were shocked he could do that. His heart wasn't really beating, it was described as flopping from side to side and his lungs were mostly filled with liquid. He survived and went on to live for about 5 years more, until his third heart attack killed him. I was the patient. I was 14 and was having a severe allergic reaction, anaphylactic shock, I was red and covered in hives, throat was swelling, didn't get treatment for hours, somehow survived with no issue, maybe I didn't come as close as I thought but it was kind of a blur, my mom still rants about it to this day, she said the woman at the front desk acted like she was being hysterical when she brought me in, already covered in hives and red and puffy, btw, she made us wait a further half hour, there was one other couple in the air, doctor ended up taking one look at me and had me rushed into the room immediately in front of the nurse's station, got a ton of shots and passed out, again, a lot of it was a blur, but I came out okay, no idea why the front desk lady was such a bee, she saw me, idk how being covered in red hives and breathing shallowly can equal oh she's just being dramatic, my mom mentioned the other couple got in eventually and asked how I was, very sweet of them, I do not remember this because I was unconscious. I've seen this with anaphylaxis. Some nurses and even some doctors don't realize it's as serious as it is unless you're full on not breathing. Allergists will insist any multi-organ response is a huge deal. I hope you carry your epinephrine and always call the paramedics if you have an issue. I was the patient once came in for stomach issues and found out my appendix had holes in it and I was harboring a pretty good infection of gangrene. I may be late to the party, not me, but my grandfather, when he was about 24-26, he was diagnosed with a rare disease that caused him to bleed like anything, my dad was a year or two old at that time, brush his teeth, bleed a ton, spit, there was blood in it too, people thought he was going to die, he was given a bottle of blood every 2-3 days, he didn't die, he battled with it for 3 years and then suddenly, the disease miraculously disappeared. He believed that it was due to God's grace as he became more religious during that time and begged God to heal him and God granted his wish. But scientifically speaking, it was indeed a miracle. The doctors was baffled and surprised that this had happened and accused him of doing something or taking some other treatment. He hadn't taken any other treatment. So for the next 80 years, a group of researchers and doctors made him travel about 100 miles every now and then to test his body. All expenses paid, only to conclude that miracles happen and he was lucky. I don't know the name of the disease, but my dad, a doctor, does. After that incident, he had a heart attack when he was in his mid-50s. My dad, a med school student was at home the same time, checked his pulse, realized it was a heart attack and drove him to the hospital. He survived again. During a cataract surgery, the surgeon by mistake cut off the optic nerve causing him to be blind in one eye. He also had diabetes, and many other ailments. He lived till the age of 77, died due to a second heart attack with three major arteries blocked. He could have lived if he regularly went for checkups and appointments. He lived 50 plus years in grace period. God's grace was what he claimed. I'm an atheist and I believe he was lucky, but I don't care. Well for me it was kinda the opposite, but he goes. I was on about 3 and a half story high bridge when I fell off into a river, and right on rocks. My heart stopped pumping after that. Then, from what I'm told a park cleaner found me after seeing me fall off, called the hospital, and then I'm in the hospital. From what I'm told by my mom, 
The doctors were all wondering how tf am I even alive. LOL I don't even know how I'm still alive. I'm a nurse. We had a patient come in with such bad gangrene and necrosis on their lower legs and feet from vascular disease that one of the feet auto amputated. Fell off. This poor person also had poorly controlled mental health issues so all that refusal of care and self neglect caught up with them. Everyone was surprised that the patient didn't even have an infection or go septic. Not a doctor. A guy I know used to use anabolic steroids for a good 10 years pretty heavily. And he was a heavy smoker and a big party goer. See. He had 3 heart attacks at 31 and continued using steroids despite our attempts to tell him it may be a bad idea. He then had a stroke the next year which gave him a pretty big wake up call. He has difficulty with short term memory. But apart from that he's somehow perfectly fine. I was a patient 2 years ago when I was 39. I was doing laundry. Mundane as heck but all of a sudden felt like my sinuses were blocked and then like I had a freezing cold waterfall inside my head. After that I experienced the most excruciating pain in my life. And I've had a natural birth no pain relief. And severe vomiting. I was conscious the entire time but the pain was unbearable. Luckily the paramedics arrived quickly, so I was told afterwards, and diagnosed me correctly and sped to the hospital. I remember everything up to being wheeled in the hospital doors then nothing until I woke up two days later. I'd experienced a, previously undiagnosed, ruptured brain aneurysm and subarachnoid hemorrhage. According to the doctors I should never have even made it out of my house alive and only had a 30% chance of surviving the surgery and if I survived that, I should by all means be severely brain damaged living in assisted care. Clearly someone was looking out for me as 2 days later after 2 brain surgeries. I woke up in IQ with my mum next to me and apparently the first thing I said was where's my phone I need to transfer money for the mortgage payment and proceeded to log in. Remembering my account number and password, I couldn't work out why everyone was laughing but it was relief my cognitive functions were intact. I was discharged 3 weeks after admission, with no rehab required, and went back to work 2 months later with no symptoms other than feeling super tired. 2 years later, definitely PTSD but physically, all healed and no residual issues. Brilliant paramedics and surgeons and nurses saved my life. I should not be here but I'm making the most of my second chance. Not a doctor. My brother was riding his bike with a battery home one night at about 25 miles per hour and a car hit him. His face smashed into the ground and was swollen as heck. The doctors asked him how tf he was alive. Completely healed in a week. I think my brother is Wolverine. I'm not a doctor but my great aunt was a heck of a case study. She developed a severe eating disorder that she never recovered from. She was constantly in and out of the hospital. She weighed 65 pounds at one point. She looked like a cartoon which because even the thin layer of fat under her skin and padding her chin and nose were gone, eaten away by her starving body. She was so fragile I always thought a light breeze would just blow her away like a pile of leaves. And yeah, an adult woman in her 50s or 60s she must have been then, weighing under 80 pounds is as bizarre as it sounds. She looked so odd I had to warn visitors. She made it into her 80s somehow. She lived something like 30 years in this way. This makes me really sad. I did a lot of treatment for my eating disorder and at one inpatient unit I met a 65 year old woman who had had anorexia and bulimia for 45 years. I was in a car crash. It was pretty serious I was lucky my car was built like a tank. All I got from it was a bruised arm, glass shrapnel in my head and the worst backache I've ever had. I showed him a picture of the car and he said I was lucky. I'm not doctor, but I was surprised when my mother treed to kill herself by eating a whole two bottles of her drugs, with a bottle of whiskey, which made her drunk. She said some bad things that night. Darchi is now alive and happy though with one thing on her shoulders now. The guilt. I was diagnosed when I was 12 with a 1320 mgdl blood sugar reading. I'd had a nasty flu for 2 weeks prior so it sort of rolled into it. But my parents took me to the doctor and they said, just the flu then one day mom called and said you are getting her into a follow up app now. To which they responded, how about 3pm and she said number. Now, it was around 10am and they said, once they saw me, that it probably saved my life. I never went unconscious or anything, 
however, was hospitalized for a week recovering and being trained how to manage. I'm almost 40 now and doing well. That intense thirst feeling is horrific, and I will never forget it. Your explanation at the water fountain made perfect sense to me. Cheers to be alive. So I'm not a doctor. I am a patient. I had a thing similar to a stroke heart attack. I had am recovering from something called broken heart syndrome. Yes it's a thing. But because I have brain structural issues. Bipolar. Actually physical brain issues from bipolar. And abnormalities. The lack of oxygen to my brain from the heart freaking up spontaneously. I have bipolar and trauma and I actually was severely heartbroken. But the meds masked it. So it was everything coming to the surface at once. This literally killed me because it was too much and manifested very painfully in my brain. I came back to life, albeit in severe pain. Chest. Head. Terrifying. I was very much not okay but didn't feel near death. Just like an 11 stroke 10 on the I am going to physically collapse again scale. So I went to the ear and the EKG tech said, didn't think I could hear. She is going to die. I actually experienced paralysis. Couldn't move my hands or legs plus I peed myself as a result of not having control of my body on the way to the hospital and was fighting for my life. They gave me something which helped. A heart med. And even though my brain wasn't okay, looked like I had scary things. It was actually just the structural abnormalities and damage that bipolar episodes do over time. Broken heart syndrome has the same. Can have, a lot of times it isn't as deadly, has the same symptoms of a deadly heart attack stop, but the damage that would normally precede a heart attack isn't there, the heart just freaking decides to up and freak tf out, it can be deadly, for me it was, I am still recovering but it's only been a week, the medical indications say I shouldn't be alive, but I have a neurologist and cardiologist now who are great and luckily I had a very smart doctor, they didn't want to tell me because they thought, Actually it's known that a dramatic medical diagnosis will cause relapse in recent broken heart syndrome. It would send me into crisis again. I also literally flatlined overnight in the hospital lol. Yeah I died before. Then kind of. And then they were sure I was going to die again. I'm here B. Thank you. Hang in there. I hope you survive this. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.